I'm Jeremy Newlick. Um, in O'Fallon, Missouri, uh, is where I reside. Uh, currently, we're in St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, it started for me about six or seven years ago. Uh, I was in a place in my life where things were not going so well for me. I was getting in trouble legally and other things like that. Um, I like to party, I like to do a lot of things that, that led to legal problems. And uh, there was a group of people, for no real good reason, who came along to me and said, hey, we used to do that too. We don't do that anymore. And this is the way our life looks. Do you want to live like this? And, uh, and I said, well, yeah, sure. And they didn't have a religious affiliation and they had no profit motive and they had, they had no real reason to do it. They scooped me up and they said, why don't you go do what we do, you know? So they got me involved in volunteering and service work and all kinds of stuff. And pretty soon I found out I wasn't so worried about my problems anymore. And uh, that there was this beautiful gift called service. St. Louis is like four degrees of separation. Most places are six. So St. Louis is a, it's like a big, small town. Okay? And it kept seeing the same people, you know? And we were like, what would happen if if we all just like banded together and we almost created like this fight club church like it was like a like where we would we'd go out and we would just do service projects and we wouldn't tell anybody about it like what would happen you know so we'd see somebody who like house their house needed painting or or um we knew that there was a shelter uh for for women who had been in abusive situations and what if we went over there and we just we gathered up a bunch of really nice furniture and we just made that place look immaculate what would happen you know so we just started to get excited about ideas like that and um we just started doing it we'd send out an email to these people and we'd be like hey next week we're going to be painting this house we need to do this and this and this and this and we need this many people to show up we're going to do it and that was what we started doing we just these spontaneous sort of projects and it was messy and it was terrible and half the time it didn't work but it was fine because we all loved it we all just loved being around each other you know and uh and so that's kind of how it this this idea called that we now call centralized started and it's spelled s-e-n-t centralized mostly because the people who are involved in it feel as though we, we have been called to be sent out into our community sent outside of any walls that we think we have sent out beyond any barriers to be to reach out to our our community I've learned more from my kids than they than I feel like I've taught them. Um, there's this, this kind of ethic of erring on the side of generosity, right? Um, and it's very easy when you're serving people so much to become cynical, um, because people will manipulate you. Um, you'll help someone, and you'll feel like you're kind of duped or something because maybe they really didn't need the level of help you thought you'd give, and blah blah blah. And so, adults get very cynical. We begin to cover up, you know, and we begin to say, well, do you really need my help? You know, and, and kind of like, like people who come into a food pantry, a couple that I've served at, it's a requirement that they have a referral form from some other organization. And, you know, sometimes people just show up because they need food, man, <laughs> you know? And uh, I guess I'm a, I tend to err on the side of if they show up a food, at a food pantry, they're most likely not on a winning streak. I mean they probably need some food. I mean, it's not a big deal. We've got plenty of it. Here's some. Please go get a referral form for next time. I mean, how hard would that be? But adults, because they feel they've been taken from time to time, will get cynical. What I've learned from my kids is that it doesn't matter how often that happens. They will err on the side of generosity every time. What Centralized has been doing when it started to develop was we realized what we could do to get a lot of people involved uh, would be to create the opportunity, kind of the sandbox, for a lot of people to come together, okay? So we, what we did was we organized a community Thanksgiving meal. We decided that regardless of, of the fact that hunger looks different out here than it does maybe in the inner city, that there were a lot of people in a suburban community who needed community. They needed to know that there were other people. So we organized this large meal. Well, we thought we'd have maybe 100 people show up. Thanksgiving Day 2008, uh, 850 meals were served out of, the, out of the kitchen. It broke down those normal barriers. As I said, it's people who are sent out 
into their community, sent out to be with each other. There were, um, there were people of, of little to no faith sitting with people with these deep faithful, you know, sort of convictions, religious convictions, and they found that they had so much in common that they could talk about. And it was a beautiful way to break down things. I heard repeatedly, we didn't know so many churches could get together and work together on a project. I'm on the board for another group called Connections to Success. Connections to Success empowers determined individuals with a, a life plan that gets them to economic self-reliance. Okay, so they focus very heavily on the employment piece of someone's development. What they found was that in this population, especially one that is being released from prison, that the, the degree to which they will be successful outside hinges greatly on whether or not they are able to find meaningful long-term employment. I found out I was already basically serving that population. I was just serving them right after they get out. And so what this afforded me the opportunity to do as a volunteer with them was to go uh, into the jails and bring their program, their personal professional development program, a part of which is this life plan, to uh, those people. Uh, these people who possess incredible skills um, and, and who have uh, incredible things to offer our community. And so I got to catch them before they get out, which is great, <laughs> you know, and, and build that relationship and so that that way when they are released, we can, we can continue our conversation and our development. There's a guy named Joe that I met in there, okay? Joe had a heroin addiction. Joe had been in, uh, incarcerated um, for 15 years. He also, on top of that, had a drug and alcohol problem. Joe got out, this was day before Thanksgiving, this was, had to be five years ago, four years ago. He doesn't really have anywhere to go, he doesn't have much he's going to do, and this is before the big feast had started or anything like that, and uh, so I decided we would go downtown with Joe and a group of my friends, and we would go um, help people downtown who have Thanksgiving meals. What we usually do, since there are so many volunteers that help with the actual feeding of people and sitting down with people, we go out and we find homeless people or others that we know have need and we say we're gonna go walk over here and have a Thanksgiving meal would you like to come with us so we bring Joe with us and Joe the whole time is the most uncomfortable person I've ever seen he's wearing you know army surplus clothes he doesn't feel like he fits into anything he doesn't want to talk to people he doesn't want to engage his entire time he's out his eyes are pointed straight down he doesn't want to talk to anybody now I have a friend named James and James is like a bulldog there are some who are gentle bulldogs James is what is called an ungentle bulldog Okay, and he's very abrasive, very direct sort of individual, but a lovely man and, and someone who'd, who'd care for anybody. He turns to Joe and he says, the next guy we find, you're talking to him. I don't care what your excuse is. So the next person we see is a man who looks like he'd been outside for days, days. It is freezing cold outside. He's wearing a light jacket. There is, he's just crusted over with all kinds of stuff. His eyes are leaking, you know, and he's missing teeth and he just looks terrible. Joe walks up to this guy with a cigarette in his hand and he's shaking like a leaf. He can't hardly speak. He's like, hey, and the guy stands up and he looks at Joe and, and Joe says, listen, we're gonna go eat Thanksgiving. Do you wanna come with us? And the guy looks at Joe and wraps his arms around him, just hugs him. Joe's body stiffens like rigor mortis. It's just like, right, he can't hardly move. We walk this guy down and we sit with him and eat Thanksgiving dinner and, and afterwards Joe is in a parking lot just crying inconsolably and I don't really understand exactly why. So I'm asking him, I'm like, Joe, what's going on, you know? And he's like, that's the first time anyone's hugged me in 16 years. It's, it's the lesson I've, I guess I've learned is that, um, that anybody can be great because anybody can serve, that it doesn't require much of you at all. In fact, it usually is just simply what you do all day. But being able to see that as a service to other people is an incredible thing. And when I can turn my eyes from my issues and my problems and all the things I'm dealing with and I can simply have one thing that I do, I would venture to say I think that's what human experience should feel like. It should feel like that unlocked sort of joy, you know?